Welcome to Face to Face. And of course, today it's a special show because we are uh, under lockdown and we have the coronavirus uh, uh, paralyzing us in New York City and all over the world. And today I'm with Javier Castaño, the publisher of Queens Latino. And we're going to talk about what's happening in Queens, what's happening in Corona, what's happening in El Must, what's happening with uh, uh, the situation of the hospital, but also about the food distribution and the very complicated life of uh, the immigrant community in uh, in New York and specifically in Queens. Javier, welcome to Face to Face. Thank you for inviting me. You're welcome. And uh, so maybe you can briefly explain Queens Latino and then and then from there we can go deeper into what's going on in uh, in Queens. Yeah, Queens Latino was created uh, exactly 10 years ago. We uh, in this June we were supposed to celebrate our 10th anniversary, but these things with the coronavirus complicate the whole celebration. And we have a, a monthly newspaper and also a, a digital edition called queenslatino.com that we upload every single day. And uh, our target is Latinos living in Queens. is more than 600,000 Latinos from Ecuador, Mexico, Dominican Republic, Colombia, Peru. Yeah, those those countries in particular. And uh, we target also uh, the issues that are important for Latinos, all local issues. We do not cover Latin America. We seldom publish international news, only if, that, if those kind of events has something to do with the Latinos in, in Queens. But uh, it's, it's a local publication, yes. Yeah. So I saw a couple of articles covering uh, what's happening with uh, with uh, health issues. So maybe you can you can cover the, the because I know the Elmus Hospital has been like the ground zero, and uh, uh, with a lot of complication and and the spread of the viruses in Queens has been very high, rich and 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 uh, reaching out the, the Latino and, and African American community. More than 60% of the, of the people who are dying from the virus are Latino or African American. So, um, uh, can you describe a little bit? Uh, did you, do you have a chance to speak to people who have been affected or how do you see the situation now? Yeah, the, I believe the coronavirus uh, is showing us and the whole world the bad situation of minorities in this country. Uh, health issues, education issues uh, that are affecting those communities, especially the, Lat the Latino community here in, in Queens, uh, are reflect uh, the Elmos Hospital, uh, where the which is the epicenter of the epicenter of this virus around the world, uh, was the one who started doing the test uh, earlier than anybody else. So that uh, brought a lot of people to take the test. That's why the hospital was overcrowded like almost a month ago. And uh, we, we saw the line of Latinos from all ways of life uh, trying to get the test. Some of them were told that uh, stay at home, don't come to the hospital unless you feel really sick. So that's why they went back and they, uh, let's say, infected other people. The other problem was that when the, the city announced, okay, we need to stay home, don't, don't come out, that was too late. When that order was um, uh, taken here in, in the city of New York, I, I believe it's March 16, the coronavirus were already... Uh, in restaurants, in uh, bars, and all kind of businesses in this area. I also heard a lot of problem with the issue on the subway of uh, transmission into the train station and so on and so forth. That problem is uh, yeah. But let, let me just finish yeah, my, sure. the beginning with with. That's why a lot of store owners, uh, restaurant owners, are dying 
in this community. Mm. Uh, re uh, uh, Peruvian restaurant, Colombian restaurant, Argentinian restaurant. This is the people who were in business for a long, long time. Uh, and then the situation with the, the solution is that essential workers, they need to they need to go around the city. Maybe they live in the Bronx and they need to come here to, to Queens or, or vice versa. So this, they cannot stop the subways. And that's a place for people to get the virus because the proximity is at the peak hour. Yes, that was a big problem. Another problem was that uh, the MTA order of less trains, less, less wagons to transport people. That create more overcrowding. So that was a big problem too, yes. So now I know for the small business, it's very complicated. And for the, the community at large, it's, uh, uh, it's people have no work for almost a month now. And, and they are very low income people who are usually working for uh, uh, day to day income or weekly income and have no, no way to, to, to get in, in income. So, um, I know the food situation has been very complicated. I know organizations who have, Uh, so an increase of 400% of people who are coming to uh, food pantry and so on and so forth. And I know in Squid, it's, it's, it's very complicated. So um, do you have any, any information? Let's, yeah, so let's, let's, let's take it from the beginning. Right now, our biggest problem is that we, we, we feel that we cannot go out. So that is very complicated for a lot of people, especially when, when they live in crowded apartments with kids and all that stuff. But the biggest problem is outside. People are out of jobs. People don't get the money from the government to go ahead. So that's the biggest problem now. Some of the uh, store owners, small businesses, are applying for loans or money from the federal government as they are being rejected because they don't have the right bank connected to the SBA, to the Small Business Administration. That's a big, big problem. Uh, some uh, uh, media less already reporting that uh, the usual people, the big business are getting the money from the government, not the small business. So on, because people, new immigrants, they work in, a, in the service area They don't have savings. They live uh, one week after another. So this is the people who don't have at this moment the, the, the money to pay the rent, the money to pay services. They don't even have the money to pay for the cellular phone service. So they are not connected. So in other words, the information divide increase with this coronavirus. Now, It's very, very difficult for, for them to connect because they don't have Wi-Fi at home. They don't have a, the right cellular phone. It's terrible. Uh, so what is happening now in the last three, four days is that the line of people looking for food, especially in Corona, is very, very long. This morning I was uh, on Roosevelt Avenue and... 100 Street, where the uh, Centro Comunitario Andino is located. It's, this center was created by Walter Sinchi, and the line was like two or three blocks. He has uh, 20, no, 250 mills to distribute. But he is telling people to go to other places, places like the office of Assemblywoman, Uh, Catalina Cruz. Now she started like almost like three weeks ago distributing 300 mills. Today she's distributing over 2,000 mills. The line was six blocks and I walked the line. Only Latinos, only new immigrants. I interviewed some of them and they said, we don't have money. And at this moment I am here. Somebody's taking care of my kids in in, in the Uh, so I need to go there with food. So this is a big, big issue now. 
Yeah, and 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 nobody knows how it's going to go. I mean, some some the mayor of the state say they're going to they're going to uh, try to reopen the city as soon as possible, but that's not going to happen in the next um, in in the next week or so. And uh, and even if this happens, it's going to be very low speed to recover, and and nobody knows how the, the if, job. If you need if you need food in the city of New York. The the Department of Education opened 430 locations for people to go there and collect three meals a day. But then these other locations are giving away meals to adults. Um, and the federal government is helping the unemployment, the, the, the people who don't have the uh, jobs right now. But for the undocumented, there is nothing available. Yeah. Absolutely nothing. I, Only a, get, three meals. That's all. They are not receiving anything else. And the government of New York, you Cuomo just said a few day a few days ago that uh, because the 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 the, 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 the New York State doesn't have the money, it is irresponsible to help undocumented. This is a person who who sell himself like he's defending immigrants and he's saying that helping undocumented is irresponsible at this moment. Who, who, who says that? Who, can, can you give us a name again? Governor Andrew Cuomo. Oh, oh wow. Governor Andrew Cuomo say because the, the state doesn't have money at this moment, it is irresponsible to help undocumented people. But the city got a $20 million grant for undocumented people. Yeah, yeah, but, but, that's, that's, yeah but that's different. That grant is from... Uh, a foundation. Um, a foundation. Yeah. The Open Society Foundation. That's right. Yeah. $20 million to help around 20,000 families. Yeah, exactly. The problem with that is that I have... Call and I have sent emails to the to the mayor of the city of New York, um, Bill De Blasio. Yeah, and they don't have a clue of how they are going to get that money, when the program is going to start, and how they are going to select the people to receive the, that money. The protocol, and it's going to be only four hundred dollars for a dog. That is not going to help that much. But I don't understand because the city did an ID, city ID, uh, a few years ago, and many people and most of the immigrants did the city ID because it helps them to get access to some of the services of the city, and they should start with that. I mean, it's already a good good way to 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 start to to distribute the, the help uh, they receive from the foundation. Yeah, let's see if they have a good database so people can be selected that way. I don't know if they are going to give that money also to green green card holders. Let's say, that we, as we say in Spanish, they have a papa caliente with that. <laughs> it's a very, very, very difficult situation. Yes. Yeah, it's a very complicated situation. Okay, anything else you, uh, because we're running uh, out of time, anything else you want to, uh, to, uh, to plug or to uh, any information people should know, uh, like the school and so on and so forth? Can you repeat the question? Sure. Any anything else you want to uh, people to know? Uh, no. Basically, that uh, uh, this situation that if we have to be at home is going to last until May 15. After that, uh, I don't know if people are going to still feel afraid of going to a restaurant or a bar. I heard that many restaurants are going to open and I'm going to take the temperature of the people. So if people have fever, they are not going to be allowed inside. So the recovery is going to be really slow. And something that is very interesting is that we are not going to any normal. The normal doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. It's going to be another reality. Yeah. It's going to be something different. I hope, I hope that people are going to be more human 
I hope that people are going to be more connected to nature. I am uh, I'm, the distribution of health is going to be more equal. We have a lot of things, but the biggest problem that Latinos are go in this area on, and the whole country are going to confront is the lack of leadership. And that lack of leadership is also the lack of ideas. Because you, what you see right now is many politicians are trying to get to this normal, but they they are not going to hold that normal because that normal doesn't exist anymore. We need another kind of critical thinking, another kind of way how we are going to live this after this situation. Thank you so much. And then we will, we will come back to this discussion because we, I really want to, to, uh, to also discuss how, how people imagine the future and what, what proposition can we, uh, what contribution can we make, uh, into the new world that we're going to face because things are going to have to change anyway. That's for sure. From the point of view of me as a publisher of a newspaper and a website, the most important concept is Uh, the information divide. Uh, this coronavirus increased that division exponentially. It's terrible. It's, uh, the, the Latino community in this area and, and the whole country are going to be left behind. Yeah, no, I know. The pro I, I know the problem with education because they have no access to to a remote education. So it's, it's, a, it's a very, very complicated. That was your show face to face and keep please watching your news on presenza.com and hope to see and hear from you very soon. Thank you.